This is episode 50 of a series where we examine the cut content, design, and development of Fallout New Vegas. The I-15 was once heavily traveled by caravans and gamblers on their way to Vegas, but after the appearance of Death Claws at Quarry Junction and the Powder Ganger prison break, traffic shifted to the safer Highway 95. The 188 trading post was soon formed along this new route, a small settlement consisting of gun runners and merchants, but apart from recruiting Veronica, it's a relatively forgettable and unfinished location. According to its asset IDs, it was one of the very first areas created during development. There were likely plans to return and refine the area, but this was seemingly abandoned to focus on more important locations. After the game's release, the 188 was finally returned to in a patch, and while some of the area's bugs were fixed, some of its content was also removed. You could once find an NPC named Destitute Traveler not far from Veronica, but he was later disabled. He's called Unhappy Civilian in the Gek, and there's two other unused NPCs using the same naming convention. They all share the same dialogue, so it's unclear if they were meant to appear simultaneously, or if one would spawn randomly, and the player would meet different destitute travelers in different playthroughs. These NPCs were on their way back from New Vegas after having an 18 karat run of bad luck. I lost everything I had at the tops, but if you gave me 500 caps, I'd head straight back. Sick, huh? I came east to strike it rich, and now I'm broker than ever. What do I tell my family back home? On the strip, everyone's nice to you when you got the caps. The moment you don't, they throw your ass out. I won big my first night on the strip. I kept chasing that feeling, right into the gutter. I sat down at a roulette table with my life savings. An hour later, it was gone. Go east, they say. Scrap lying in the sun for you to grab. You're right. The strip ain't nothing but a monster. Chews folks up, sucks out their caps, and spits them back out. The Strip's got more gorgeous women than I've ever seen in one place, and most of them's affordable. They have lines where they would ask the player for 25 caps, but they're set up as greetings, which means it was very unlikely that many players would ever see this dialogue tree, particularly when considering all the other greetings they have. Perhaps they were meant to initiate conversation and then beg the player, but if so, these AI packages were never created. Can you spare some caps, mister? Can you spare some caps, ma'am? Oh, you could. You just don't want to. I understand. Sorry to be a bother. But, of course. It's alright. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so hungry. Sorry I had to bother you. I... well... I've lost everything. You're very kind. I wish... well, I'll just thank you and leave you be. There's three other cut NPCs called Civilian Hopeful A, B, and C. They were on their way to New Vegas for the first time, and their names would have displayed as Traveler. Only one of these NPCs was actually placed, but she's never enabled. You hear the losers around here complaining how they lost their shirts on the strip? It's pathetic. After I win big, I'm gonna buy my friends dinner at that fancy gourmet restaurant. I saw ads for it back home. I walked all the way from Hub. Thought I'd rest my feet here a day or two, then I head on to the strip fresh. I'll get in, win big, get out. Take those winnings back home where they'll do some good. You know it's illegal for us to gamble back home? The government wants to keep us poor. I'm sick of the sob stories you hear around here. If you don't know when to stop gambling, that's no one's fault but your own. I can't wait to see the strip. I hear it's so beautiful. There's two unemployed mercenaries, both of whom have unique lines. One of them can be found beneath the underpass, but he was disabled even in the original release. I only work for caravans, alright? Try someone else. Sitting around here makes me miss my raider days. I don't know why I figured it was time to get respectable. Whatever you're selling, I ain't buying. I don't work for freelancers, so move along. Stay out of my way and I'll stay out of yours, got it? There was once a water brahmin by the Sloppin' Shop, but it was removed by a patch. There were 
were once two NCR soldiers placed here. After destroying or upgrading the Securitron bunker during the main quest line, these soldiers were replaced by heavy troopers and power armor. One of the regular soldiers and one of the heavy troopers were later disabled by a patch, leaving only one of each. There's a gunrunner here named Alexander. In the final game, he only has a single bodyguard, but in the original release, he had an additional female bodyguard. These NPCs had AI packages that would cause them to alternate shifts. One would sleep while the other followed Alexander around and protected him. The cut bodyguard was arguably too dedicated, as she literally smokes cigarettes and lurks over Alexander as he clips through the ground of the NCR tent. Yeah, I guess I can see why they cut this. There is also two other bodyguards, one for the day shift and another for the night shift, which would have given him a total of four guards. Despite recording dialogue for them, these two were never actually placed, though they may have just been deleted. We're just muscle. Alexander's the man to talk to. This job's boring enough without talking to you. Go see Alexander. Alexander doesn't pay me to talk. All of the guards have a sandbox AI package for wandering the area, eating, talking to other characters, using idle markers, etc., but this was later disabled. The designer of this area clearly put a lot of effort into creating believable schedules and behavior for the 188's characters. This can still be seen at the Slop and Shop, where Michelle and Samuel switch between sleeping and running the stand. There's also a pretty funny bug that can occur with Samuel and Michelle, where they eat all of the shop's food before they can ever sell it to the player. The player can mention to Alexander that they found a new sheriff for Prim and helped the NCR attack the prison. Still plenty of other problems keeping the 15 shut down, though. Thanks for playing. That'll help. Still plenty of problems out that way, though. At this point, the player can brag, I've taken care of all the trouble west of here. Caravans can start using the I-15 again. Still, it'll take some time for routes to readjust. I expect I'll be working from here for the foreseeable future. These lines use a topic called PC Achievements, and there's a fourth unused line, where the player could boast they killed the Death Claws at Cory Junction. You took out a Death Claw nest. Either you're lying, or you're tougher than you look. Still plenty of troubles out that way, though. Thanks for playing. Presumably the player needed to get rid of the Death Claws before they could brag about the I-15 being safe, but this line is never flagged, and the player line was seemingly never written. It would have been a great moment of reactivity if caravans and travelers started using the I-15 again, but unfortunately this was never implemented. These cuts were relatively minor in the grand scheme of things, but it's yet another example of how Obsidian's vision was impeded at nearly every turn in nearly every area in the wasteland. These ambient NPCs would have made the 188 into a more immersive, memorable location. Ultimately though, all of this was left on the cutting room floor.